HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, Hiller Volleyball and Football continue on in postseason play. The juniors battled the seniors in the annual Powder Puff football game. And Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, we take you to this year's annual Top of the Hill ceremony. On Tuesday, November 21st, Michael Whalen, Scotty Mackin, Sarah Ellum and Josh Hanna were inducted into the Hopkinton High School Hall of Fame. Here is a look at this year's annual Top of the Hill induction ceremony. The kids that have in town for Scott is just remarkable and it's been that same way ever since that very first day 17 years ago. Um, I was making up a list with his mother um, before, we, uh, before we met up tonight just of all the things he's involved in even outside of the school and the community for Hopkinton, uh, running the Parks and Rec summer camp, working with the fire department, the police department, um, volunteering, dressing up as Santa Claus, uh, refing Special Olympic basketball games and always teeing up at least one or two players, uh, working at the Boston Marathon, the Memorial Day and Veterans Day events that he does with, with uh, Mike Whalen, uh, the Turkey Bowl, Live for Evan race, my uh, Timlin race, uh, Michael's run, it just goes on and on and on. Wally's bodyguard at the, uh, the Little League parades, um, if there's an event going on in town, uh, you're most likely, likely going to see him there. Um, something that he's also very, very involved in is the Special Olympics. He's done skiing, softball, swimming, soccer, and basketball. Um, and nothing makes Scott prouder than when he has an event for uh, Special Olympics and he comes to practice or a game the next Monday and he's got the medal around his neck. And the way the kids react and, and go up to him and congratulate him and high five him um, for, for you know, his success with the Special Olympics is something that's always been really cool too. And on top of all that, he works at Home Depot. He's been working at Home Depot in Natick for 21 years, you know, running that place as well too. So he's a busy guy, but he handles it all. Um, so in closing, um, the perspective uh, that Scott brings to our students and our athletes and community members is truly remarkable. Um, the amount of messages I've received from parents over the years thanking Scott for his efforts in teaching their sons beyond just their specific sport is truly amazing. Um, I've been a part of a lot of difficult losses at all levels as a coach here at HHS, freshman JV and varsity. Um, but after each and every one of those losses, Scott's right there smiling, telling the team it's going to be all right. And each and every time the kids have responded in kind with great appreciation. Hey Scott, did you have a good time tonight? Yep. How does it feel to be honored? Are you happy? Happy. Congratulations, buddy. You deserve it. I hear my, I hear my, uh, my team battle I think I'm, 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 I'm being there. I hear what, what. I will always remember this ceremony as earning the respect of the people in your life is a true member measure of achievement. I want to thank all who have touched my life, including my family, especially my daughters, Susie and Sarah, who validate and give purpose to my life. And I'll make a prediction right now that someday my daughters will be standing right here where I am accepting the same award. One more thing. The name Hiller will always be politically correct. As many of you are aware, people outside of Hopkinton ask, what is a Hiller anyway? Well, you can tell them that it's not a person or a thing. It's a state of mind. It's a spirit. It's Sarah and it's Scotty. It can't be seen, yet it's everywhere. Carry Hill of Pride with you for the rest of your life, and thank you for your attention.
first of all, I had a very nice day. Thank you. And uh, I um, feel overwhelmed, really. Uh, this, this honor is, as I mentioned in my speech, there's been thousands and thousands of graduates over the years, and to be singled out uh, is uh, very humbling, very humbling, and I really, really appreciate it. This soil, this community of Hopkinton, and particularly the teachers in my life, all of the teachers, created the conditions that allowed me to thrive, and now I hope I can do the same for the students of Hopkinton, to introduce them to the power of language, to help them strengthen their voices, and to realize that we have a responsibility to save each other. Fitzgerald's Gatsby believed in the green light, the orgastic future before him. Well, teachers have that death depth of aspiration as well, but we also have the opportunity to create wonder, foster hope, and help construct the framework necessary for young people to live their dreams, to create a life. Thank you once again for this tremendous honor. It has been a remarkable day and night. Thank you. Um, it feels wonderful. It was such an honor to hear these, the kind words that people spoke about me and to be included in the group with Mike and Scotty and Josh, which was a surprise and an honor he so deserved. So it's been a wonderful night. You certainly deserve it. Congratulations. Thank you. Lastly, we have a surprise inductee tonight, Mr. Hanna. After graduating from Hopkinton High School in 1995, Mr. Josh Hanna attended Framingham State University majoring in secondary education, and he later received his master's degree in educational leadership from Simmons College. In August of 2000, Mr. Hanna was hired as a history teacher at Natick High School. During his 13 years of teaching at Natick High School, he also served as a baseball coach, a football assistant coach, club advisor, history department chair, and was the Golden Excellence in Education Award recipient for Educator of the Year in 2013. TVL and Boston Globe, all-star. Josh also played varsity baseball for me. He was not the captain. <laughs> he was not very good. <laughs> Josh was even our school mascot, Hillerman. How incredible that that name, all these years later as you win this prestigious award, has stuck with you. That's him. Now it's hard to find. <laughs> so we looked in and, and saw all the things. I don't mean to invade your privacy, but it's public. The things you wrote in that yearbook. Your secret desires. Become the Syracuse Orange Man. Now I've written letters for hundreds of kids over the years to play baseball, to study history, to play football. I've never, Josh is still the only one I wrote to the school to the athletic director to be their mascot. <laughs> and you didn't get in. So. Sorry, Josh. To have a wonderful family. And you have succeeded that, in that endeavor. And your, your family is beautiful from top to bottom. And you're uh, a role model for your two wonderful children. All right, so I know you weren't expecting it, but uh, no. certainly well deserved. I don't feel to be honored tonight. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm kind of speechless about how it feels. I, I just love this school so much in this town that to be a part of it, uh, it, it it's, it's a great feeling. You know, it's a nice way to go into a holiday break for sure. And, uh, but the reality is there's been a lot of important people that have given me the confidence to, 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 to try to lead and, and be a part of this community in a positive way. And I'm just trying to give back to so many people that gave to me when I was young. And, and I feel like if we do that, uh, in society, then we'll keep getting better, we'll keep improving. So, yeah, it's, it's a tremendous honor. It totally caught me by surprise. Uh, Mr. Simos sharing those kind words was kind of a nice blast from the past, and uh, you know, it's just a great place to be. So, I'm happy to be able to turn on to work tomorrow morning, bright and early. Well, you certainly deserve it. You do a lot for the community. Congratulations. Thank you. The 10 and 0 Hopkinton Hillers football team advanced to the state semifinals and took on a very talented Melrose team to try to earn a trip to Super Bowl weekend at Gillette Stadium. Here's how the game went. The 10 and 0 Hopkinton Hillers took on the 10 and 0 Melrose Red Raiders in the Division IV state semifinals. 
All defense in the first quarter, but Melrose found the end zone to cap off a long drive in the second. I've seen him do a sneak here. He might be a little too far to do a sneak. Third and, third and about a, a long yard here. Oh, oh, he keeps it right up the middle. And he is in for the score. Charlie Stanton with a quarterback sneak. Later in the second quarter, a costly mistake by the Melrose defense. They leave Ryan Kelleher's favorite target wide open. What has been a very fast first half. Oh, not a lot of passing. It's a lot of grinded out. Only two minutes, 245 left. Keller in the shotgun back to throw. He has time. Going deep, wide, wide open. open for Will Abbott. He's going to take it in for a touchdown for the Hillers. Here we go. Hawkinson gambling early here in this game. Four for two. Kelleher under center. Hands it to Abbott, who throws a pop pass in the end zone. And that is going to be caught by, looks like, Linquist. That was Linquist. And the gamble pays off for the Hillers, and they take an 8 7 lead. Hillers remained up 8-7 at the half. The Melrose offense put together another long drive to start the third quarter. A little bit of a different formation here as Stanton goes under center. He gives it to uh, C who bounces left and he is into the end zone. But a very nice play by Melrose, concluding a very long sustained drive where they have established a run game. Here we go for the extra point. The handoff is to see he takes it straight into the end zone, almost untouched for the two-point conversion. And that will make the score 15 to 8 Melrose. And Hopkinton has some work to do. Then later in the quarter, Isaac Seed finds a big hole in the Hopkinton defense. Kind of like Doherty. He was. Here, here we go, Melrose. Handoff to Seed. And he breaks one. And he's off to the races, Don. He's going to take it in for the score. Wow. Isaac Seed running through people, running around people, and he has put Melrose on top by two scores now. Melrose never looked back after the two third quarter touchdowns. The game would end by a final score of 22 to 8. Melrose improves to 11 and 0 and advances to the Division IV Super Bowl game versus Neshoba. Hopkinton ends a terrific playoff run with a 10 and 1 record. The Hillers next play Thanksgiving Day, 10 a.m. at David M. Hughes Stadium versus Ashland in the annual Thanksgiving rivalry game. Congratulations on a great run, Hillers. Congratulations to Hillers football on a great postseason run and best of luck Thanksgiving morning versus Ashland. Coming up next on HCAM News, Hiller Volleyball attempted to win the Division I state finals. We have highlights from this year's Powder Puff football match and Matt Clark has our HCAM insider. You're tuned into HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome back to HCAM News. The Hiller girls volleyball team competed for the first time in the Division I playoff bracket. Here is a look at the tremendous run, including their state finals match versus Newton North. Jess to Angie, just going down the middle. Nice swing from Ivy. Nice put away for the 25th point in the first set. So Hopkinton takes that first set, 25 to eight. Girls oh, keeps it Lydia keeps it alive. Angie back to Bella, and Bella puts it away. Pillars take the third set, 25 to four for a 3-0 sweep of Doherty Memorial here in the first round of the. Allison gets to that. Mia goes outside to Gilbert. And nice put go. away. Good swing from Amanda. Oh, good uh, reflexes from Ivy. Wow. And that's it. Hopkinson takes the second set, 26-24. Great comeback. Marino gets that. Cross court. See and that's it. They do it. Hopkinton takes the third set, 25-18. Rachel, Angie, see if they have to put this away. There it is. There it is. Set number one is in the books. Girls take that 25-20. This is the biggest seesaw set I've seen all season. 
Oh, and yeah. that's a way to do it, Amanda. <laughs> An ace to close out the second set. Lorette, block, and there that's it, it folks. Hopkinton defeats Concord Carlisle. Three sets to zero. Lorette, quick pop over. Westford goes outside, blocked, and that's it. Great block from Sarah Pusco. And that takes the first set, 25-15. Uh, Killers taking that one. The girls are going to switch sides. Blocked, and that's it. Sarah Pusco with the fourth block of the set. Hopkinton takes that second set, 25-3 to for a 2-0 lead. Hopkinton fans are on their feet. And that's it. Hopkinton is the Central West Division I champions. They're going to move on to play in the state semifinal match. And there's D. King with the Central West Trophy. Die on the line, there's an ace to take the first set. Great serve from Rachel. Hopkinton takes that first set 25 to 19. The girls are gonna switch sides. We'll grab Meyer. And there's a block. Kept alive, Lorette settles under that. Angie, back set, Zale. Great power, should be a free ball. And a net violation, there's the second set. Hopkinton takes that, 25-17. Oh, that's the match. Shattuck wow. put a little too much juice on that one. A little too much mustard, I like to say. Yep. There so you go. Hopkinton takes the uh, third set, 25-19 for a 3-0 sweep. Pretty impressive, Mike. All right. We are ready to get this Division I state final match underway. The Newton North Tigers is against your Hopkinton Hillers. 24-20, still at set point for Newton North. Nice ball from Allison. And there's a little mental error from Ant from Newton North. Allison hits the back row again. That's out. And that's out. There's six. That back row. Oh, and there's the set point. Nice put away from Newton North. So Newton North takes the first set, 25-22. Nice serve from Amanda. Oh, and that's it. Newton takes the second set, 25-19. Nice serve to the back row. They go back set to Wang. And that's it. Wang with the uh, thunderous kill and now mobbed by the team. <coughs> so Newton North takes the third set, 25-23 for a 3-0 sweep of the Hillers. Congratulations to Newton North. And congratulations to the Hillers too. I mean, it was a phenomenal season. Yeah, it really was. They got nothing to be ashamed about. I know this one hurts. I know it's heartbreaking. There's nothing worse than losing a division uh, one state cha or any state championship, rather. Yep. But they have uh, everything to be proud of. They really had a tremendous season and so much talent on this team. What a job Coach Grabmeyer did. The outcome might not have been what the Hillers wanted, but they should certainly be extremely proud at their incredible run during their first season in the Division I playoff bracket. Congratulations, Coach Grabmeyer and all the players on another memorable fun season. After losing last year, the class of 2018 seek their first win in Hopkinton Powder Puff football history. Their only hope at a win during their high school careers were to defeat the class of 2019. Here's a look at what happened during this year's annual Powder Puff football match. All 
on the keeper. Just cruising past oh. defenders, pushing one down there, the 10. Big yardage by Caitlin Halloran. There it is. Run up the middle. Short of the first down. On the carry, it was Caroline Murphy on the tackle. Sydney McDonald with a big stop. On the oh, keeper. Around the edge, and into the end zone! Good. Touchdown, yeah. seniors! Seniors celebrating wildly on the sidelines. Can't blame them. Caitlin Halloran on a 10-yard touchdown run. Juniors make some noise. Halloran on the keeper. There she goes. Past oh, the 20. Look at that. And into the end zone. In. Touchdown, seniors. seniors. Impressive performance by the seniors tonight. A 30-yard touchdown run. The juniors need a big play here. We have a carry. It's the speedster. Corinne Messier just shaking past defenders up oh. the sideline. And stop just that short of the end close. zone. Push out of bounds at about the five. Juniors are getting close here. Short it's yardage here. Yep. It's another pitch. Oh, they're giving it to the speedster. Yeah, Corinne Messier is going to go all the way to the house. Touchdown, Juniors. It's still anybody's game, folks. All right, here come the Seniors. They get another big run here. That might be run it, up. folks. And this is, is going to be a huge run. Nika Kaminsky into the end zone. Folks. And it's a touchdown, seniors. 45 seconds, seniors 18, juniors 6. Five seconds this could left be the last the play. Here we are. Here we go. Quick snap. It's a run. She's up. The Here seniors we go. approach the seniors The seniors already rushing the field. The play's still going. The and band is on the field! The like band is on the field! And the seniors have won! The class of 2018 brings home the victory at Powder Puff. 18-6 is the final. The seniors are the Powder Puff champions. Hats off to the juniors class of 2019 on a well-played game. But this year, the crown belongs to the class of 2018. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is HCAM's promotions coordinator, Matt Clark. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, November 24th at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts talk about their favorite Thanksgiving traditions on a brand new episode of Hopkin and Coffee Break. On Monday, November 27th at 7 p.m., Boston area folk singer and songwriter Rob Siegel shares his musical passion on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Wednesday, November 29th at 7 p.m., Margie and Lisa are back and invite you to join the conversation on a new episode of The Margie and Lisa Show, live on HCAM TV. On Thursday, November 30th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton School Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And on HCAM Ed, the high school drama ensemble's production of Susical the Musical and the Thanksgiving Classics football game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to view pictures and videos from throughout our community and also to stay up to date with upcoming events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day.
HCAM is supported by our viewers and by Blackstone Valley Wealth Management, providing highly personalized financial planning, wealth management, and customized solutions through transparent, unbiased advice. Visit us at BlackstoneValleyWealth.com. And they wanted to create a living document. They were certainly visionaries, but they could not have imagined the current lifestyle and modern technology we have become accustomed to here in 2017. James Madison and the other contributors valued free speech above all rights. And consequently, the first change or first amendment to our constitution was the freedom to express and communicate ideas. I would not want to live or raise a family in a country that would not, that would prohibit the right of free speech. Presently, there are those who cite this First Amendment as they are expressing dissatisfaction with our government by kneeling during the national anthem. Yes, it is perfectly legal to show disrespect. And many have given their lives to protect this and other rights our nation enjoys. Certainly, social injustice exists, and it needs to be, needs to be addressed and corrected. It seems that frustration with this issue has led some to call attention to this situation in hopes of resolving the problem. However, the path to change is shorter when positive steps are taken and respect is maintained. I say to those who use our flag, our Pledge of Allegiance, and our national anthem as props to call attention to themselves and their issues to hear this. Do not expect others to be sympathetic and respectful of your beliefs and concerns if you show disrespect to their values. Now moving along. Okay.